We have another one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have about three minutes. Um, good morning, Adriana. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. Look at my sister. Hold on. Let me show you my hair and why Veronica keeps telling me no. <laughs> okay. But she hated it. <laughs> she hated it. But um, it's because I haven't put the titanium in yet. But I that's like that. That's that silver, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a real pretty silver. But then I saw somebody with red, and I was like, mm. <laughs> like, oh, guys. Oh, my husband. Forget. I don't want, I don't want Girl Scout cookies no more. Why? Oh, I'm good. Girl, I said, take the box. Take it now. Take the box. <laughs> They're cupcakes, but they're Hershey. Oh, I know that's good. These suckers are good. They're triple chocolate cakes. Triple chocolate, that's a shame. Triple <laughs> chocolate cake. Uh oh, here he comes. He's coming to get the box. <laughs> All right, let me put everything on the screen. Here we go. All right. Ding dong. Oh, look, my mommy's here. Okay, where did it go? Where are you? Good morning, Mom. I know you can't talk, but good morning. There it is. Hey, where did it go? I had it on the screen already. Okay, well. Here comes Arbor. Everybody, can you all see my screen? While I'm messing with it? Yes. Yeah. No, Hold on, it's my school. <sighs> Give me one minute, ladies. Let me get this up. As um, as I'm getting this up, Miss Ashley, can you pray us in? Yes, ma'am, I sure can. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship and study in your word, God. We ask that you cover Crystal with your love, God, and your words of wisdom, God. Lord, I ask that you come forth through her, God, and let her be a vessel willing to be used by you, God, to share your word. God, bless this time of fellowship, God. Bless this time of understanding and dedication to your word and to your promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Everybody said amen. Okay, so Crystal... Do you want to tell everybody your situation right now? Is it because it's pulling up? Yes, I'm at work, you guys. Um, it's my head of kids in the background, so I'm going to uh, say some of my notes on the struggle is real, everyday sin, and then I'm going to let you guys know what I struggle with, and then I'm going to come in and and say yeah. now we're going to be real. I've told you what I struggle with. Now, what about you? And that gives everybody time to go around and say what they struggle with. Yay. So she's incorporating everybody Insane. today. <laughs> so um, she's at work. So um, she didn't know she was going to have to work today. So she's going to give a brief overcast of what she studied. And then um, she's going to let us know what her struggles are every day. Right. Because we all have struggles. And um after that, uh, we're going to go around the room and we are going to grill and get in your business. Um, we're going to we're going to talk about <laughs> what, our, what our struggles are. Right. So um, I don't know what's going on with the computer this morning, but the computer is running a little slow. Maybe it needs some Hershey chocolate um, uh, cupcakes. 
to get its <laughs> momentum going. But how many of us can say that there that we struggle? Like we can have really good days, and then there's just days that we we struggle. So, but um, there are day. I mean, there are days that sometimes we feel like nobody sees us, right? So um, this song just played in my head all night long. So um, I added it. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and listen to that right now. Okay. My mom, Peter. Maybe, maybe it wants me to sing. Where's Kiki? Am I frozen? No, it don't. It do not want you to sing. <laughs> there she is. Oh, she heard me. <laughs> I was frozen there for a I second. I hope it do freeze you if you start singing. <laughs> That's not nice, Kiki. Wait till you come. Tell you. No, it don't want you to sing, baby. I'm telling you. Did you hear my granddaughter? Well, that's one thing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. being nice. She sings. She sings just like me. Hold on. Being nice. I don't know what is going on. <laughs> yes. It's being direct, Sissy. Come on. That's All right. Yeah, come on. Nice. Oh yeah, because she one complains about my hair, and then the other one complains about my singing. That's it. I'm leaving. All right. Here we go. I like it now. Oh, don't go red. I, I like it. I don't work with it. See, see if you can take the screen, Veronica, because it's freezing on me. I wonder if I log off and log on, will I lose all of y'all though? No. Yes. Just click leave. Don't click end. Okay. Uh. Where did Crystal go? Let me see. Share. You can't start sharing. Because you're right. sharing. It says right. it won't let me share. Okay, wait a minute. It might. Here we go. I think it's low systems resources may affect your audio. Okay. In Jesus' name, let's go. Crystal, if you can hear me, you can go ahead and start. Yes. Go ahead and you can go okay. ahead and say. Okay, let me. Okay, today we're going to talk about the struggle. The play, it's real. Play it right quick. Every day. We already did. You were late. And Ms. Angela prayed us in. Okay. You get here I'm on time. Sit up. Sit up. Get on time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We uh Proverbs, let's see, 4 15, 4, 15 through 14 through 15. It says, do, do don't evil doers. Don't even don't go, go that way. Turn away and keep on moving. And so sin it always wins when we initiate the encounter. Evil always gets a sale when we open the door and hear it's tempting pitch. God has given you a straight and narrow way to walk. Do not allow yourself to deviate, deviate from the path into sin, avoid it, turn away from it and pass on. Okay. Okay, in Mark 7, 21 through 23, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil reasonings, adulteries, whoring, murders, theft, greedy desires, wickedness, deceit, indecency, and evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these wicked matters come from within and defile a man. 
That was March 7, here, 7, 21 through 23. 23. Our Lord Jesus made it clear that sins come from within our hearts. Jesus tells us that the food we eat enters the stomach, not the heart. So the food we eat doesn't make us unclean. Fasting from food doesn't cleanse the heart, mm -hmm. but fasting can allow us to become more clearly aware of what is in our mm -hmm. hearts. Right? Come yes. on. Mm -hmm. Very good. In First Corinthians 10, 3 through 4. Mm -hmm. And I'll eat the same spiritual food, and I'll drink the same spiritual drink. For they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. Come on. The, the apostle cautions the Corinthians against security, adultery, and all appears of it, appearances of it. And uh, I say he forgives our sin completely, releasing us from its bondage and guilt. Repentance is like returning to the Lord by submitting to his authority. Refusing to repent allows pride and, and rebellion to establish a stronghold in our lives. Yes. Okay. And what I struggle with is thoughts, like thoughts in my mind and uh, having a judgmental spirit. I, uh, I struggle with that. I struggle with a, a lusting spirit. Let's see. And I struggle with Knowing the right thing that I, I'm supposed to do in the in the word and, and and not doing it, so those are the things that I struggle with. But thank you. And, for and I, I think that's a um a everyday struggle from for everybody knowing the, what you should do and not doing it. Yes, because we wrestle against flesh, right? Because we were we were born in a sinful nature, right? <laughs> Our nature yes. wants what it wants. We're selfish. We're stubborn. We want what we want when we want it, right? Like, oh, Kiki, you missed it. Like my uh, well, Hershey, my Hershey chocolate. I mean, my Hershey chocolate cupcakes, right? We want what we want. Mm -hmm. So, um, don't worry, ladies. You don't have to buy me Girl Scout cookies next month. Um, it's uh, Hershey's uh, <laughs> chocolate uh, cupcakes, but. Thank you, Crystal, for being so transparent, because a lot of people won't get up here and, and be honest on what they struggle with. Right. And transparency mm -hmm. um, is accountability. And so accountability allows you to see the thing so you can recognize it. Like you said, judgmental on, you know, like mm -hmm. your sister or something so, you know, um, there, <laughs> there's encouraging. Right. <laughs> And then there's judgmental. So when somebody walks into the church and you're like, girl, what is she wearing? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Maybe, maybe she is colorblind and can't see that she's wearing bright yellow and, and pink. And so we're judging people and, you know, sin is sin, no matter if you murdered oh. somebody or no matter if you just told a small little lie. Either, uh -huh. either sin leads to one thing. And what does the Bible say that sin leads us to? Separation from God. It's separation from God. And if you don't repent from that, if you're not accountable to that, if you're not seeing that, if you're not recognizing your error, if you stay in sin, where are you going? Oh. You're going to be That's separated right. from God when you leave this earth, right? Yep. So uh -huh. uh, you had also given Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, and it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so, <coughs> so great uh, a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and per perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand the right hand of the throne of god 
Consider him who endured for sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Think about this. Jesus never sinned, but he died for our sins, right? He suffered for your pleasure mm -hmm. and never got to feel the goodness that we think we were feeling in that moment. So like, like a drug addict, right? And they're trying to numb um, those feelings. And uh, like, I talk a lot, you know, talk to a lot of heroin addicts and they're like, you just don't know when I, when, when I inject, you know, that heroin, I just, what I feel. And that pleasure sent our savior to the cross. And he never experience the pleasure that we think that we're feeling he suffered so that we could fulfill our fleshly desires mm -hmm. and that that i mean who do that for you so accountability is is huge right when you can recognize your sin and mm -hmm. popping on um the reason why i'm taking over is because Crystal uh, got a call this morning and her friend needed help at a daycare. And so she didn't know she was going to have to work this morning. So she's working. And so um, she came in here and gave a real quick overview of what God gave her. But now we're going to get real. So um, now that I think uh, this thing is functioning, um, I want to take you back to this song because it just kept playing over and over and over in my dreams last night. So um, we're talking about sin and the struggle. While this song is playing, I want you to think about the sins that you struggle with every day. Crystal said one of hers is being judgmental, right? And lust, right? And so think about the things that you struggle with every day. Because we're going to go around the Zoom room and I see 11 of us on here. So you better not pop off. Um, and we're going to, we're going to just, if even if it's just one and some of you ca can't do the the audio so there's a chat button and you can type in what you struggle with and in jesus name you're going to play okay can everybody see the screen Yeah. I'll see she is running a hundred. <laughs> Okay, I'm on. Under the shadow of our steep. Has anybody felt like that? Oh. Man, it, it, you know, and we're so we're so busy, right? And and just watching that and, and hearing about, you know. The stairs under, you know, the stairs, not like climbing stairs, but that people give, right, to people that are going to church and like the way she was dressed, right? We don't know what's in somebody's closet. And if their nighttime clothes from being in the street is all that they have to come in, why are we judging them? Cool. Mm -hmm. Right? If the the drunk is coming to church and threw away his beer can as he was walking in the church, who are we to say anything? Because the struggle is real, right? He may not be able to go 45 minutes without that drink before he starts shaking, but we want to judge him for the drink 
rather than celebrate that he's there. We need to take some time and look around us. We may struggle, but I know that we are in Christ, so Christ is with us. How about those that don't have him? We need to take the time to recognize the people around us and be the, the, the girl at the end and sat down, didn't even know her and sat down and like, I see you. Because how many times have we wanted to be seen? How many times has the enemy told us, even as Christians, they don't see you. They don't care. That's a lie. Because each and every one of you know you can pick up the phone and call any of us at any time. And we're going to be there. There's no shame in needing somebody by your side. It's the for you to recognize that we were not made to be alone. The Bible says man is not to be, supposed to be alone. Not just men, but man in general. It is not good for us to be alone. Because yeah, that's why when Jesus sent the disciples out, he sent them out two by two. Two by two. Because if one fell, there was somebody there to help him get up. But but let's go a little bit further. I can't help you if I don't know what you're going through. That's it. Well, that's exactly it. You've got to open your mouth. And there is no shame. Sin is sin, right? So yep. whether if it's porn or like Crystal said, lusting or judging or, you know, drugs or drinking or whatever the case may be, we're here for you. We're here to walk alongside you and encourage you and walk you in the direction that God needs you to be rather than leaving you stuck. And Sissy, um, by confessing it with your mouth, that's inviting God into the situation so he yes. can intervene. And that's also letting the devil know, hey, I see you. I'm aware of what you're doing. And I'm not going to continue to let you do it because I'm speaking it out of my mouth. And God is going to take care of it because he know he take he cares for anything that concerns you. If it's a concern of yours, it's a concern of his. So by you speaking it out your mouth, you inviting God into your situation. So that's a good thing that she said it because she recognized it and she want to do something about it. That right. was good. And then the Holy Spirit is going to convict her, right? Because so, she recognized it. She spoke yeah. it out. So now when, when she's going to do something that she just talked about, Holy Spirit's going to convict her and be like, hey, whoop, hello, didn't you say that's it. But when you close your eyes to it, then the Holy Spirit can't move in it. So I was going to go around the room and make everybody say what they struggle with. But God is saying for me not to. Or they can volunteer if they want to speak. If they want to, you can. But yeah. I want you to recognize it, right? Mm -hmm. And you can either write it in the chat. that You can push that chat button on the top. Or I'll just be the first to, to say go, what I struggle with. Go, go right ahead, Miss Kiki. Um, I struggle with forgiveness and apologizing. I feel like um, if I forgive you for something, that means I'm letting you back in. And if I let you back in, I'm giving you the opportunity to do it again. And if you do the same thing again, I'll feel like, well, I should have never forgave him for if they was going to go back, back and do the same thing again. That's my mindset. I know it's not the right mindset. Also, when I apologize, when I apologize to someone, it makes me feel like I'm I'm being weak because mm. I apologize to you. And then you'd be like, yeah, because I told you such, 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 instead of you just accepting my apology and being like, I love you anyway, don't badger me and make me feel like I shouldn't have apologized apologize right and i think like a lot of us we look at forgiveness that way right like but we have to realize that forgiveness isn't about us yeah it, it, it's not and how many times has jesus forgiven you 
And so things happen in our lives and sometimes it's repetitive, right? There's, there's a time in your life where you Mm -hmm. need to say enough is enough, but also you've got to give grace, grace and mercy where grace and mercy has been given to you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus isn't giving us grace and mercy with an attitude. Yep. He's not saying, well, I'm going to forgive you, but if you do it again, right. Then it's also a thing where I'm forgiving you. You didn't even ask for forgiveness. You don't feel like you've done anything wrong. Yeah. Well, and that's you did something to me and I have to forgive you for what you did to me instead of you coming to me, asking me for forgiveness because you knew that you did something to me. Right. But that's between them and God that releases you from the enemy because in unforgiveness, every time I see that person, the enemy steals my joy, right? Because anger mm-hmm. comes up. So y'all know me. I ain't letting nobody take nothing from me. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to forgive you. You know what I mean? I'm not going to forget, but I'm going to forgive you. So don't don't allow the enemy to take the fruits of the spirit from you. No. Does anybody else want to share? Okay, great. (laughs) So let me see. Okay. So here's another one. Veronica has one sister. She's she wrote it in the chat. She said, I struggle with opening my Bible because it's so easy to read online. Yeah. use my Bible app, but I know God wants me to flip the pages. I'm also learning to wait and be patient for the man God is building up to be my husband and the father to my children. Amen. Thank you for reading that. Yeah, sometimes we want we want to try to rush things. Um and, and we find ourselves in situations because we didn't wait on God. Exactly. So that, that's a form of, of practicing patience. Yes. And a lot of us don't have patience. And be careful. And it, like you said, it's, it's easier to pick up the Bible app than to flip through the page. Because, yeah. Because we keep our phone in our hand all the time. So it's easier oh, yeah. to just grab if the you phone. Kept and your the Bible, Bible app on the phone. If you kept your Bible yeah. in your hand as much as you do your phone, can you imagine what this world would look like? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wow. Tell Trayana to sit down and pray for me. And I need her to pray for me. Yeah, Crystal put in the chat. Um, this song reminds me of when Jesus was asleep in the boat with the disciples, right? And it's the first time that they had gone out and a storm, a storm comes in, right? And they had just been with Jesus and just saw the miracles that he could do. So they get in this boat, right? And then the storm starts raging. And majority of these men were fishermen. So they knew how to handle a boat. They knew how to be on the sea. They knew how to go through a storm. But this storm was different. And so how many times in our lives do we become prideful, right? And I've been through this before. And I've struggled through this before. But I'm going to try to handle it, right? I'm not going to call I'm not going to call on Jesus. Um, I, I can do this. I can handle this. And he's right there in the boat. And instead of trying to wake him up, knowing that it would cease in a second because of the the miracles that they just uh, saw him perform, right? They allowed him to sleep to try to prove to him that they were capable of doing this and being with him. Ladies, apart from him, we are nothing. We are nothing. No matter how many times the, the Israelites went around that mountain. It took them 40 years. 40 years. Seven days. They should, exactly, Adriana. It should have taken them seven days. 
Seven day journey took 40 years, 40 years. And that's ridiculous. Like that's putting on the helmet and saying, send me in coach and running into the wall time and time and time again, over and over. Does anybody else have anything that they want to add? Because we are down to two minutes and I want to be able to pray us out. Okay, great. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for loving us. Even though we are unlovable sometimes, God. Lord, allow us to see through your eyes, Father God, and recognize the things in our lives, Father God, that shouldn't be a part of us. May that conviction come in, Father, and may it not convict us to the point where we look down on ourselves, but that we can look at these things and say, now I'm going to be accountable for these things, and I'm going to repent. And repent, God, you said, means turning away from it. It may come to us, God, and we may fail, and you're there every single time, but allow us to recognize it to where we don't want to do it anymore because we don't want to hurt you. God, we all struggle each and every day. <clears throat> we are of the flesh, God, but you said that we are spirit in truth with you. God, we worship you and we honor you, and as we look at the cross today, Father God, and we see the, the fleshly desires that we um, enjoyed or felt the pleasure from, you suffered for. Mm -hmm. 